today. Uh, you can still play along with our interactive portion, and uh, it'll be great. Yeah. Sauvignon Blanc, as we will get into, is just everywhere. So hopefully, everywhere. Hopefully everyone's able to find a bottle. I think that's one of the nice things about Sauvignon Blanc is people know it. And I maybe that's not always a great thing, <laughs> but Sauvignon Blanc can range between so many different ways of, of producing it from different uh, quality levels too. Mm. So even if you've had bad experiences in the past, you know, maybe today we can provide a little bit more information about the grape and the wine production and uh, really gain an appreciation for the grape. It's actually one of my favorite uh, white wines. It was one of my favorite white wines from the beginning. Of course, Shannon is, I think, still my absolute favorite, uh, but that's because it can be made in bubble form. And <laughs> I think that, that just gets brownie points when it's made in bubble form. Uh, All right. Wonderful. All right, well... Um... We're two after, so we're gonna, oh, okay. Oh, we're gonna turn down our music here. We don't think it actually comes through on your end, but it really puts us in a good mood to start. Um, okay, so you are on the clicker over there. All right. All right. So this is the map of Bordeaux, the region of left bank and right bank. We're covering it up. We don't, we're not talking about that today. Uh, everybody knows, everybody's heard of Bordeaux. Uh, the reds that come from there, the red wines of the left bank and the right bank are your Merlot and your Cabernet Sauvignon. And legendary. Legendary wines. Uh, but today we're going a little bit south uh, to Grave. Now that's a tough, tough one. I, I struggle with, uh, you know, French words because I don't speak French. I didn't learn French. Uh, it's even more confusing when it is an English word. <laughs> it, it's grapes. But no, no, it's Grave. So that's where we're going to be drinking from first. And that is on the orange region, just in from the Atlantic Ocean. And there's a forest there um, that was planted, uh, I forget when, but the Dutch. Land forest. Land forest. So the Dutch um, kind of pushed back the oceans and the, and the seas at that point, And they have this wine region and uh, the whole left bank was underwater at one point. That's crazy. Yeah, it is crazy to think that. Yeah. Uh, and then we're going to be going... Oh, here. We're going to go to the second map. Uh, it's a lot easier. There's a lot <laughs> less information on here. So the first wine uh, is the first star on the on the farther west side. And then we are going to go to the Entre du Mar on the, in the magenta portion. Magenta. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh! Hold on one second. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for letting us know. Okay, let me see. All right, let's get that fixed up. Yeah. Oh. Well, at least we figured it out early. Thank you so much for unmuting yourself and letting us know. Uh, yep, so you have to click in there and then go back. All right. Perfect. Ah! Can everyone see the map? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Great. All right. And this is the better map to be looking at anyway. This is the more complicated This is one. the more complicated we'll one. one. And now we're back. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so the Medoc region and the Bordeaux Coats and the saint emilion Pomerol regions, those are the, the red wine producing. And we don't actually have white wines that come from those regions uh, because the land's just so valuable that they would be using it for red wine production. But as we get into the, the Grave portion and the uh, Entre du Mar, the land is either a little bit too cold, uh, the, the climate of the region, or the land is too fertile. And you just really don't get that great of the concentrations of flavors and the legendary expression of wine. All right, so moving on. So we're gonna try our first grape because you guys sitting there, we're not gonna get all cork dorky on you guys without being able to drink something. <laughs> just wait. <laughs> so this one is from the Grave region and it is 100% Sauvignon Blanc. Now that is not very typical for this region. Generally they do uh, mix some grapes together and we'll get into that in a little bit but so we will be exp expecting some very characteristic Sauvignon Blanc uh, gooseberry grassy lime okay but when we smell this wine mm. what do people get on the analysis between apricot and crushed gravel and feel free to take a drink of it and 
you know, my, my favorite breathing exercise is to drink the wine, swallow it, and then breathe in through your mouth and out through your nose. And really focus on that exhalation of, do you pick up one more note? Um, Okay, so, yeah, it's kind of cool, right? Uh, apricot, I, I'm getting a ton of it. And I wouldn't say it's crushed gravel, but there is a little bit of minerality on the finish, um, which is, you know, pretty common for a Sauvignon Blanc, especially like from the New Zealand region. You get a very yes, uh, zestiness in the front with a minerality at the end. All right, so now moving on to our second one. Do you get salt or lime? Put the lime in the coconut. <laughs> hmm. It's got a little bit of both, yeah. I mean, it's, I'm getting the salinity in that, in that citrus lime. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't necessarily go as far as to say lime, but there is a citrus note um, on the, when you when you smell the wine, but then once it goes into the mouth, mm. there's like this, the salinity effect in your mouth. I see some thumbs up out there. Yeah. yeah. I also saw some peace signs with a couple. <laughs> yeah. More thumbs up on that one though. There is definitely a lot more thumbs up. All right. And so now moving on this one, we're going to take a minute and everybody dive deep. So gooseberry is going to be kind of like a vegetal, note um sometimes it's a little grassy with a little berryness in it uh if you've never had a gooseberry i haven't personally i've just drank a ton of sauvignon blanc from new zealand and everybody's just like that is quintessentially gooseberry um so dive a little deep especially on the nose this is where we'll be trying to pick up the uh the essences here And this is like going to be a tertiary flavor, so it's like really subtle. I'm getting a little bit of both again. I am as well. I do get more gooseberry on this, but on the on the very very fine underneath it all, there is a hint of vanilla that uh, just really kind of helps round out the the expressive aromatics coming out of the glass. So, anyways, feel free to keep drinking while we talk at you or to you. I mean, so one of the great things that makes the Bordeaux region so interesting is that all of the wines that are produced here have a detectable amount of pyrazines. And that is what gives bell pepper flavors, grass, elderflower peas, and bittersweet chocolate notes. Um, the bell pepper and the bell pepper really comes through on the reds. But what we're looking for here is like an elderflower and grass notes. That's what we're going to see in the expression of the white wine. Now, you are actually smelling that fennel group um, and it is at a detectable level. And so that's why we smell these things. That is what a pyrazine can smell like. And we taste it as it comes out of the glass. Our brain tells us that it smells like these notes, which is Fascinating. Okay, moving on. All right. What is this a picture of? All right. Now, you got to think real hard on this one. I know. It's tricky. Uh, typical answers will be human. Human. Man. Some people may say man. But really, I mean, this. This is a man. This is a human. And why is he a human more than the stick figure? Now, that's because... He has body. So today we're going to be talking about the body of the wine. So the Sauvignon Blanc has a medium to light body grape. So how can we find in a white wine bottle uh, a little bit higher body, right? Well, if it has a medium to light body and we have a Semillon grape that has a medium body, then we could have a ratio between the two, right? If we mix the two grapes together, we have this marriage of acidity playing with body and it produces this mouthfeel that can be more pleasant. And so when we look at the Bordeaux region and we have grapes, wines that are made with the Semillon and Semillon Blanc um, 
which is what we're going to taste next. And just bear with me a little bit. Uh, then we can have a, a very nice, well-rounded mouthfeel. So another way that we can control the body of a wine and increase its, um, you know, its its expression, its viscosity in your mouth, uh, less like pins and needles on your tongue from the high acid and more of a, a pleasant, like viscous kind of milky texture is to allow some of the residual sugar that exists in the grapes once they're harvested to not convert to alcohol. That allows us to have some sweeter wines. Uh, sure, it does have higher carbs. So if you're on a really strict keto diet, you should not be drinking wine. Uh, but if you are drinking wine, uh, finding you know drier wines will have less carbs in it, but it will have less body, typically speaking, from sugar. So. One of the last ways that we can kind of control the body of the wine. I love this graphic. This is so cool. So that is a, a very specific yeast that is used to eat up malic acid. Malic acid exists in the grapes. And as a grape uh, goes through its growth cycle, um, it you know develops its malic acid and, uh, and its sugars inside. But after it's been harvested and it's going through fermentation, we can put this yeast in and the yeast, yeast eats up the malic acid and poops out the lactic acid. And this occurs in oak barrels. So this first wine that we had is different from Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand because it's seen oak. And that's why we're getting a little bit more roundedness in the flavor. It's not as acidically tart and aggressive. Um, we're getting some notes of, of vanilla and and the apricot even is a is a play on some of the notes that you would get had you not had um, this malolactic fermentation. It really helps to kind of soften that fruit mm -hmm. flavor. Mm -hmm. So the acidity goes down and the body goes up. All right, so we're gonna take a quick aside. Uh, just and this is really nitty gritty. Uh, bouquet or aromas is this first one that we're going over and that's derived from the grape variety and the, the essences that we get from that are you know what kind of fruit notes do we get what kind of flower what kind of herbaceous notes that's going to come directly from the grapes that are inside of of the wine uh, the next word is bouquet uh, technically if you are if you say oh this bouquet of grassy notes, that's, that's it's wrong, evidently. Um, so if we move on, we get uh, yeasty notes and uh, spicy and nut aromas from the impact of the oak interacting with the wine. It's semantics, but I think it's important to know. Um, training yourself to say the aromatics, or wait, no, hold on, the bouquet. I don't know, I forget what I say. <laughs> I'm drawing a blank. I use these interchangeably. I'm just not supposed to. That's all it is, I guess. All right, so moving on. Just to recap, you know, so how do we increase the body of the wine? How do we go from a stick figure to a man? Well, our first one is through science. We select the grapes and then we blend them together to create this wonderful mouth expression. We can uh, do some malolactic fermentation where we soften the malic acid and increase the body of the wine. Um, or we can leave residual sugar um, in the wine, and that will increase the viscosity and the mouthfeel. So the wine that we had first went through malolactic fermentation, um, and we are going to be talking about the next wine, which went through an expression of mixture. So when we smell this wine, oh, let's do a cheers. Yes, everybody, cheers. Thank cheers, you for making everyone. it through the nerdy part. Yeah, uh, great to see all one, of you. One step closer to cork dorks you all are. It's great. <laughs> it's wonderful. So different. So, so if, if different. If you had the opportunity to have both of these, like, do you agree that it's, it's just like, oh, my goodness. And if you have two glasses, feel free to smell them side by side. And that, the the notes coming out of the glass really should showcase the the influence of the oak barrel on the first one versus mm -hmm. the second mm -hmm. the Ooh. bouquet i'm getting okay so yeah I'm, I'm getting. yeah almost like almost all right we're gonna wait for everybody at home to to 
the. Why are you waiting? I have a question. Yeah. Yes. If, if you go back to the slide that shows the different uh, bouquets. Mm -hmm. Then for a wine that was in stainless steel, yes, shouldn't have very much of a bouquet, right? It should it not. Shouldn't have part. Right. So uh, when a wine is fermented and aged in stainless steel, the bouquet notes, these tertiary essences, should not be there. Um, you will get a lot more of an expression of fruit aromatics. And um, I think there's, there's some play with ageability um, when it's not aged in oak. Um, and that kind of comes from as a, bottle, as a wine ages in the bottle, some of the more aromatic essences and the fruit and uh, vegetal notes, they actually start to break down and become weaker over time. And as they become weaker, the bouquet notes kind of reveal themselves a little bit more. And so there is one caveat, though, and that is with bubbles, because a lot of bubbles, they have a second fermentation where they add sugar and yeast. And so that extra yeast and resting on the lees is going to create, a, a, you know, these tertiary notes of yeastiness, even if it isn't aged in oak. So great question. Great question. Yeah. Oh, oh too, far. too far. All right. So back to salt and lime. Yeah. So, yeah. one more time, everybody yeah. at home. See lots of thumbs up. Lots nice. of thumbs up. <laughs> Very cool. All right, so moving on to the next. So, floral notes. Um, I picked jasmine for this, not in any specificness, but like any kind of white flower, summer flower, field, wild field flower versus crushed gravel, some kind of minerality. Definitely get something floral. Yeah. Are people at home able to, uh, yeah, get, seeing some more thumbs up here? All yeah. Right. All right. Yeah. There's a floral note that just wasn't present in the in the first one. There is also again, like in the mouth, you get this minerality that mm -hmm. does come through, especially again on the end, and that is very indicative of the Sauvignon Blanc grape. You really look for a nice zestiness and a uh, crisp minerality on the, on the, on the finish. Um, so one point with the floral notes is that this blend has 2% Muscadel grape. And that is really just to pull out that one floral note. That's, that's what it's there for. And so blending is it's an art and a science at the same time. They're really trying to create an expression in your glass that you can enjoy. Um, yeah. All right, so the last one that we have here. Beeswax or vanilla? I'm not gonna put my hand up until I see uh, other people put theirs. <laughs> What do we got at home? Yeah? Oh, we got some split decisions here. Some okay. vanilla. Okay. All right, I'm going to throw mine up. I do get I do get beeswax on this. A, a waxy kind of honey note um, and, and mouthfeel really expresses itself. And that comes from the, um, the grape mixture that we have. Um, yeah. The Semillon. Semillon's joined us here. Yes. In our second bottle. In our second bottle. And so our last slide, our conclusion slide, is just how expansive the, the Sauvignon Blanc grape is around the world. Uh, these are all the regions that some, uh, Sauvignon Blanc is grown. Uh, the Semillon is growing in popularity because I do feel that there is kind of this push towards, you know, having body with, uh, body with your wine. And Australia has on the east coast, right around Sydney, uh, Hunter Valley, and they are growing. They're making 100% Semillon grapes and uh, grape varietals in the bottle and such like that. Uh, fascinating wines. I think there's also some Virginia winemakers that are doing Semillon as well. So hopefully we can get back out there at some point and try these great and amazing wines. But 
you know, until then, we will just enjoy being transported through our wine bottles and uh, little lectures like that. So thank you guys all for, for showing up. Uh, our next one is going to be August 6th. Um, and so we are going to open it up for discussion at this time. So thank you guys. Yes. Well